So the first thing that we're going to do is examine the eye movements, looking first for spontaneous nystagmus. So we carefully observe the patient, having them look straight ahead. Just imagine yourself looking off into the distance without looking at anything in particular. In this particular case, since we have a normal subject, there's no evidence of spontaneous nystagmus. The next thing we'll do is look for some gaze-evoked nystagmus, possibly direction changing, by having the patient pursue a target, such as the examiner's finger. So watch my finger as I move it slowly from side to side. During this, we are looking for breakdown of smooth pursuit eye movements, and these pursuit eye movements are normal. <clears throat> and holding the eyes out laterally in the extreme position of gaze, we're searching for any nystagmus that evolves in the far lateral position. We'll hold the eyes there for a few seconds, and then do the same over on the other side. Again, looking for any sustained gaze evoked nystagmus that might be beating to the left when looking to the left, or to the right when looking to the right. After seeing no nystagmus, we want to make sure that the patient has no evidence of ocular misalignment vertically. So we'll have the patient again look straight ahead this time. Look here straight at my nose, and then simply cover each eye alternately. Keep looking straight at my nose, Keep looking straight at my nose and looking for any refixation or movement of the eyes in response to the alternate cover test. We saw none. The patient has no evidence of strabismus or ocular misalignment, either vertically or horizontally. If we saw vertical misalignment, we'd be concerned that the patient had skew deviation. And finally, we'll take a look at the third element, the head impulse test of vestibular ocular reflex function. We'll start by asking the patient to look straight at our nose and then <clears throat> let them know, warn them that we're going to be moving their head from side to side, first slowly and then a little bit more quickly in a moment. Just keep looking straight here at my nose as we go. I'm going to turn your head a little more quickly. And what you can see that I'm doing is displacing the head laterally by approximately 20 degrees and rotating rapidly back to the midline. The same over to the other side, rotating rapidly back to the midline. The key to the technique of this maneuver is that it's performed with a rapid head rotation and generally it's best performed the patient being unaware of which direction they're going so often during the technique we'll oscillate between slow movements and fast movements, paying attention to the fast movements, and sometimes changing the direction. So that the patient does not become aware of the uh, order in which they're being tested, which can make the findings disappear after several cycles. So together, these three components make up the HINTS test component battery, or the head impulse test, nystagmus, and test of skew. In a patient with acute vestibular syndrome, the presence of either a normal head impulse test, direction changing nystagmus, or vertical strabismus or misalignment called skew deviation, uh, on any of those three findings are indicative of stroke in a patient with acute vestibular symptoms of vertigo, nausea, vomiting, unsteady gait, and intolerance of head motion. Now we're going to perform a close-up examination of the HINTS battery, the head impulse test, the stagmus, and test of skew. We're going to perform them in that order this time. And what I'm going to ask the subject to do for the head impulse test is look straight at the camera. And <clears throat> what you're looking for is any evidence of slippage of the eyes off of the target during the head rotation. So I'm going to place my hands gently on the side of the patient's head and warn them that I'm going to move the head from side to side. I'm going to rotate your head slowly from side to side. You just keep looking straight at the camera. 
doing a great job. And now I'm going to turn the head a little bit faster, okay? And just relax your neck. Keep looking straight at the camera. And what you'll note that I'm doing is displacing the head laterally by about 20 degrees and rotating rapidly back to the midline. Okay? Again, rotating the head approximately 20 degrees and rotating rapidly back to the midline. The key in performing this test is that during the head rotations, there need to be uh, <clears throat> opportunities to alternate between fast and slow or change up the direction of the head movement so that the brain stem doesn't interpose a <clears throat> saccade in place of the vestibular ocular reflex. If it gets too predictive, the brain stem simply creates an artificial fix for the broken vestibular ocular reflex response. So typically we'll try to make the sequence more unpredictable. Just try to relax your head. And again, the eyes stay straight on target, looking straight at the camera. No refixation saccade indicates a normal response, which in the context of an acute vestibular syndrome indicates uh, usually that the problem is a stroke rather than a vestibular neuritis. Next thing we're going to show is the search for nystagmus. And again, pursuing the finger from side to side, looking for evidence of breakdown of smooth pursuit, and here the smooth pursuits are normal, and evidence of nystagmus out on far lateral gaze in either direction, pausing at the extremes of gaze to make sure there's no gaze evoked nystagmus, and again the results are normal, occasional, Refixation saccade is within normal limits, but any sustained problems with smooth pursuit or nystagmus at extremes of gaze is generally pathological. And finally, searching for evidence of skew deviation or vertical strabismus with alternate cover testing. You're going to alternately cover each eye with the patient looking at a fixing an object, either the examiner's nose or in this case the camera. Just keep looking straight at the camera, and I'm going to cover each eye alternately and watch the eyes for any evidence of movement or refixation. What you can see is that the eyes stay stable. Small refixations horizontally are normal, but vertical refixations are abnormal and in the context of acute vestibular syndrome indicate skew deviation which generally points to stroke as the cause for the symptoms. And that's the three-step Hintz battery.